Hello and welcome to the Royal Way here on Stadium Drive Sports. I am your host, Sean Barr, and today on the Royal Way, we will review the last series the Royals had with the Texas Rangers. And also coming up, we'll have your favorite segments you love to watch, switch them up, make them all new for you. And afterwards, I'm going to go over the top 10 oldest stadiums. You might not know where the Royal Stadium stands. You will find out later on. And I want to make sure that before the episode is over that you learn a little something. So I do these things for you to help you know your baseball stuff. Now, you might even break a smile here and there. Even if the Royals hit a skid with some bad marks. Skid marks. Skid marks. Get it. Never mind. Let's just go in. Let's hop into it. Let's go. I'm done. All right, without further ado, let's get into game one of a few. The boys in blue versus those rude, crude Ranger dudes deep in the heart of Texas. And the Rangers jump out to an early 3 to nothing lead in the first off a of Corey Seager home run plus a two-run single by Cole Calhoun. Corey Seager hits another home run later in the third to make it 4 to nothing Texas. Yeah, Brad Keller did not get off to the start he was hoping for, and the fourth inning did not help things out either as Miller singles to center to drive in another for the Texas Rangers. And the Royals get a run on the board in the fifth from an infield single from Melendez that scored Hunter Dozier. But Amir Garrett comes in with the relief but gives up a wild pitch in the process that scores one in the sixth. The Royals get three runs in the seventh from two errors by the Rangers. Yeah, Texas tried to help them out, but KC just can't overcome that quick start from Texas in the first with three runs. And the Republic of the Texas Rangers take game one with a final score of six to four. Let's take a look at the box scores. And Hunter Dozier has the best day at the plate going two for three with two runs scored. Bobby and Salvi have pretty bad games. Eight strikeouts to one walk. Six through nine hitters all get a ribby. Not bad. Brad Keller takes the loss and falls to one and three on the early season. Nine hits were given up on five runs. One walk on three hits. His ERA is still at a decent 270. Let's go to game two where the Royals are hungry for their 10th win of the season and they set pitcher Gabe Spire on the mound, tries to continue his 0.00 ERA streak and he does. He hasn't given up a run in a long time. Whit Merrifield hits a home run in the third. 16 of his 69 career home runs have been on the first pitch, which this one was. And happy birthday to former Ranger Bobby Witt, who saw his son double in two runs in the fifth in their home state of Texas being from Colleyville. The Rangers homer in the 6th just wasn't enough as the Royals add another in the 7th. And in the ninth, Emmanuel Rivera pinch hit for an ice cold Ryan O'Hearn. And he comes through with a bases loaded triple that clears the bases. Texas adds a 4th error of the game as Rivera ends up coming around and the Royals make a snowman on the scoreboard. The number 8. Let's take a look at them box scores. In game two, we saw the middle of the order get completely silenced, with O'Hearn dropping his average below 100 as the DH. Witt and or Witt, no matter which one you talked about, had good games. In fact, Merrifield's was great, almost perfect. Salvi and Taylor were able to get on base twice, and as for the pitching, well, Joel Piamps gets the win in relief. And besides Snyder's hanging sliders and Boobich's boo-boos, top-notch pitching. All right, game three, the rubber match, which decides the winner of the series. Texas starts things off in the first with one when Mr. Calhoun singled in a run. Jonathan Heasley gets the start for KC. Michael A. Taylor got a single in the second. Hey, and <laughs> kind of wondering why I mentioned that because that would really end up being the only hit the Royals would have until later in the game in the eighth inning. Yes, very quiet game few singles here and there. I've seen more firepower from a block of ice than I have the Royals in this one. Josh Stallmont threw a wild pitch to let a run in, hand it to the Rangers pitchers. They shut us down like we're going out of business. Well, at least out of the Lone Star State. Let's take a look at these box scores. Okay, I feel like I'm being generous on this one. I'm giving everyone who was able to even get on base a decent day rating. If you got a walk or a single, you're an all-star. As for the pitching, uh, well, it really wasn't that sharp. Every pitcher gave up multiple hits in an inning, and we're getting kind of wild. 
in the Royal Way, player of the series is the Bat Boy. Couldn't come up with one, sorry. I bet he did a great job. All right, let's take a look at the updated division standings. The Cleveland Guardians are tied up with the Chicago White Sox at 500 through 30 games. Minnesota still leads them by two. And the Royals sit at six and a half games back right now. At least, we are not in last place. Right? Right? I hear you. Well, who's up next on the Royals' schedule? Looks like the Royals are about to get high. What, dude? That's right, they're getting mile high. <laughs> okay. What do you think I was talking about? They're playing the Rockies, May 13th through the 15th. Tomorrow, 740, Saturday, 710, and Sunday at 210. It's now time for a Royal Way Special Top 10 Oldest Current Stadiums. Number 10. Progressive Field, home of the Cleveland Guardians, opened April 2nd, 1994. Number 9. Orioles Park at Camden Yards, home of the Baltimore Orioles, opened April 6, 1992. Number 8. Formerly known as Comiskey Park, Guaranteed Rate Field, home of the Chicago White Sox, opened April 18, 1991. Number 7. Rogers Center in Toronto, home of the Blue Jays. Been there since June 3, 1989. I have been there. Number 6. Hey, I've been there too. Kauffman Stadium, home of the Royals. Been there since April 10th, 1973. Yeah, break out that old time piano music. Number five. Ring Central Coliseum. Okay, Oakland Coliseum. Been there since September 18th, 1966. Number four. Angel Stadium, home of the LA Angels of Anaheim. There's been angels in the outfield since April 19th, 1966. Number three. Dodgers Stadium in LA, home of the Dodgers, April 10th, 1962. Number two. Wrigley Field, home of the Chicago Cubs, since April 23rd, 1914. Number one, Fenway Park, home of the Boston Red Sox since April 20th, 1912, during the days of the Titanic, 110 years ago. It's now time for the Royal Way News Break, in less than one minute. All right, here we go. Zach Granke, Daniel Lynch, and Carlos Hernandez are your probable starting pitchers for the Royals in their next series in Denver. And during a Guardians versus White Sox game Tuesday, right fielder Gavin Sheets misplayed a can of corn. That's a routine fly ball for those not hip to the baseball lingo. Yeah, the fly ball just popped right out of his glove. A run scored and the batter ended up getting a double. A White Sox announcer accidentally let the S word loose. He said, are you sheeting me? Except a little bit more explicit. And somebody needs a bar of soap for that dirty mouth. Speaking of the Guardians, somebody caught COVID. Yep, they had to postpone at least a game in that series with the White Sox. Milwaukee Brewers player Christian Yelich becomes the first player ever to hit three cycles against the same team. And the Cincinnati Reds are on a historical worst start in Major League history. Don't feel bad, Royals fans. They started 3-22, and they now sit 12 and a half games back, and they are on pace to go 37-125. and And that would be by far the worst ever. <laughs> Oh, what I miss? Did the Royals win? We won't help you avoid instant karma, but we will help you win your fantasy league. Want to take home the prize and the pride in your fantasy football league? Don't worry, we got you covered. Tune in. To fantasize this, right here on Stadium Drive Sports. Hey there, I'm Kevin, host of the 12th man at Arrowhead Drive. 
Be sure to tune in every Sunday and Wednesday for all your Chiefs content right here on Stadium Drive Sports. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. You don't have to break bats like Bo Jackson. You can learn about him on the Royal Way. Are you still watching? I can't see anything! It's now time for the Royal Way's Best to Ever Wear It Awards. And we are on the number 17. And the nominees are... Kevin Apier, Chris Getz, Wade Davis, and Hunter Dozier. And the winner is... Kevin Apier. Wade Davis was really close. Comment your vote down below. Oh, well, it's the Royal Wade joke of the day. Which takes longer to run? From first to second, from second to third, or from third to home? Well, it's from second to third, and there's a short stop in the middle. Did you know? Did you know the largest crowd for a Royals game ever was 41,860 on July 26, 1980, Royals versus Yankees, and it won't be broken. The capacity for Kauffman Stadium is 37,903 as of 2009. It's trivia time. Which franchise has been no hit the fewest times? Is it A, the Texas Rangers? B, New York Yankees, C, your Kansas City Royals, or is it D, the Boston Bean Eaters? And the answer is C. Yep, KC has had only two games since 1969 where they've gone without a hit, best in the majors. Guess who? I was born in Nashville, Tennessee on October 10th, 1995, I'm 26 years old and stand 6'4". I currently wear the number 40 for the Kansas City Royals. I made my debut this year getting a win in my first appearance on our second game of the season. And the host of the Royal Way was there to take a picture of the win and a picture of my interview. I am Colin Snyder. Now you know. All right, Royals Empire, we have plum run out of time. I apologize. But you can catch me on Monday for a brand new episode of The Royal Way here on Stadium Drive Sports. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to like and be sure to comment and subscribe if you really love the content. Hey, we go further than just baseball if you didn't know. If you skip through those commercials, it informs you that we have the 12th man at Arrowhead Drive featuring Kevin Britton as the host. He will tell you everything you need to know about your Kansas City Chiefs and how to prepare for the season. And speaking of preparation, let's prepare together on Fantasize This. Ooh, sounds sexy. Fantasize. Sorry about that. Uh, fantasy football. Yeah. That's what it's about. Fantasize this is about fantasy football. Yep, we'll get all your rosters set and ready. If you want to bring home the prize and the pride, look to us to help you out with that before the season starts and throughout the season. We will be here for you. Check out our lineup. It's coming up right in 3, 2, 1.